Hello, lovely people. My name is Jennifer Rice. I'm a transformation coach. I've been in the transformation space for a few decades, personally and professionally, with businesses and individuals, and mostly with myself. So I have been on my own journey for a couple decades, uh, started meditation practice 15 years ago. It wasn't until five years ago that I sort of understood what was helpful and it's it's not spinning around in your head or even trying to calm your thoughts it's uh, something a lot deeper and I can't wait to share this with you today uh, part of this discussion also involves uncertainty and if you don't know me you might not be aware that I voluntarily put myself into a very uncertain situation I pulled the rug out from under my life I sold everything that I owned in the United States and got a one-way ticket to Europe and roamed around for a while. I'm now uh, based in Tbilisi, Georgia, the country, not the state. And I feel so blessed that I feel like everything has come together for me in a way that I can share this with you now, right when everything is, you know, the rug's getting pulled out from under everybody's feet right now. So the purpose of this video is to introduce you to core concepts, and I will be following up this video with some guided meditations so that you can practice and learn the how-tos of what I'll walk you through today. All right, so you have this lovely four-square diagram here. I'm not gonna put any labels on it. I'll see if you can figure it out as we go. All right, so we're in the time of coronavirus and literally every day something new is happening. Every day the news is bringing more bad news and it's creating a lot of fear, anxiety, dread for what's coming maybe irritation at people that you're cooped up in the house with, maybe loneliness that comes from solitude. Uh, maybe you're not, you're not used to it. Personally, I'm feeling angry at um, some of the missteps in the news, and that's personally what I'm working with. So we have all these emotions, and they're not pleasant. So I've actually asked a few of my friends and family, how are you coping? What are you doing in order to work with these? So I'm getting a lot of different answers. I'll start writing them down in a couple of these different buckets. The number one answer I get is wine and chocolate, uh, at least for the ladies. So we'll just make this alcohol, sugar, uh, let's see, smoking of all kinds of substances. We've got I'm just gonna put evasion here. <laughs> Drowning ourselves in binge watching Netflix, Amazon Prime, this is, uh, I'm guilty of this, and popcorn, lots of popcorn. Uh, news and social media, why is this? It's pretty masochistic, right? The news is giving us anxiety, so we just keep going back for our hit. Uh, the phone, all of these things, I don't have to tell you, right? All of these things aren't exactly the healthiest things that we can do. Now, of course, having a glass of wine is perfectly acceptable. But when we're caught in what the Buddha called the source of suffering, which is this dance between aversion and craving, they're opposites. We're pushing things away that we don't want to experience, and we're clinging and craving something else instead to make us happy then we get caught in this very unhealthy cycle. All right, well, I do know a few of you said, I go for long walks. Exercise is awesome. Walks, yoga, uh, creating art. I'm starting to get back into this. Sunshine and fresh air. If you can get out, I hope you're taking advantage of that. Connecting with friends and family. There's a lot of uh, Zoom happy hours going on out there. I've been having my own, which is fantastic. 
take a bath, journaling, right? Um, meditation, set boundaries. Here, this is what I have done for myself. I get my news fix every morning for about 15 minutes, turn it off for the day, turn it back on at night, get my another 15 minutes, not right before I go to bed. So these are all can be more healthy. They can also be a version of craving or clinging. We can run away from this into a lot of this. So only you know this, right, of the motivation behind it. Do you have to do these things in order for you to feel a sense of calm or peace? Do you have a craving because you're pushing away this? And that's when some of these things can actually sit down here. Right? All right, we have an empty box here. What is it? Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and fill this in. So this is what we all want to feel, right? We all want to feel love, joy, peace, gratitude, all of these very high energy emotions. And the trick is, if this is what we're looking for, how do we live in this all the time? Is that even possible? All right, so I'm gonna tee up this idea first and then I'm gonna tell a story to highlight how we can start working with all of this. Do you have scaffolding or a skeleton? We even call this, well, I won't go there. All right, let me tell you a little story. I lived in San Francisco, and any good San Franciscans know their history. 1989, the big quake, uh, bridges collapsed, buildings collapsed, fires. Uh, it was a really traumatic time. Very high on the Richter scale. The higher on the Richter scale, the more it tests the structural integrity of the buildings. Houses that were not reinforced fell right over, tipped over other houses. The ones that were kept standing. And as the city rebuilt, they realized, well, a lot of these houses are, are on sand. A lot of these really big buildings downtown in San Francisco built on sand, believe it or not. But what they've done, the newer buildings have steel pylons that go down 300 feet into the earth in order to hit bedrock, to be grounded in bedrock. So when an earthquake hits, and I have been on a very high floor of one of those buildings when an earthquake, fortunately a not a very strong earthquake hit, you felt it, the whole building is designed to sway and it doesn't go anywhere. The weeble wobbles, but it doesn't fall down. This is what we want, right? So the difference, I wanna contrast this with scaffolding. Scaffolding, you've seen it, right? The temporary structures that go up around a building. They put it up when they're doing, you know, repair work on the outside or they're painting a building. There's no structural component there. Scaffolding doesn't hold anything up other than the workers that are working on that building. If anything happened, that scaffolding is going to fall right over. But how often are we reliant on, you can even just call this the outer world, outer world instead of our inner core. We construct scaffolding in our lives. Over the years, maybe it's a person, a person's your scaffolding. You need this person in your life to make you happy, or it's a job, or it's your routine. It's anything that is happening that you've constructed outside of yourself. And the key to knowing when you have scaffolding versus a skeleton is how much you feel the need to control your outer environment in order to make yourself feel a certain way. And I speak from experience, a lot of experience with this because this was me. Uh, my entire life was scaffolding. And 
It's about looking outside of ourselves, right, for what's going to make us feel stable. And we're not even aware of doing it. I would challenge you. If you have a if you're really feeling a lot of this right now, I'd really challenge to figure out like what am I relying on for my sense of identity, my whole sense of self. So how we move over here to our skeleton is to our, our core. You know, every exercise trainer talks about the core. The core is what holds the skeleton in alignment. It keeps everything stable and strong. So part of being here is in alignment with who you truly are, not who you wish you would be or what other people want you to be or the shoulds or expectations but who you are deep in your soul. And the only way we actually know that is we feel it in our bodies. So this whole conversation around this integration of mind, body, spirit, you've heard this a lot, right? And there's an under, um, there's too little of a focus on the body. The body is what I have learned is actually the, key to everything because we feel everything in our body our intuition is in our body that sense of yes this is me and no this is not me this is in our bodies our our emotions that we feel whether they're positive emotions or negative emotions or we call or labeling them negative emotions they simply are unpleasant all of these are part of who we are we feel them in our bodies and over the years especially if we've experienced trauma in our past our bodies can become uncomfortable places to be. And we can't hear our own inner wisdom anymore when we start uh, trying to get out of our bodies or trying to not feel the feelings that are going on in our bodies. And I call this whole thing the skeleton. This is part of your skeleton too. It's not something to run from. This is just human nature. This is things that we feel as human beings on this planet. And the faster that we can just go, yeah, I'm feeling this, and I'm going to sit with it and allow it to be. And then what I can do is choose, not in a craving way or a clinging way or pushing things away, but my, my mantra actually is I can choose joy instead of this. Whatever this is, I can wake up, have awareness, recognize what's going on, and say I can choose joy instead of this. And from there, you're very empowered. And from there, you can act with mindfulness, with intention. The last two things just to fill this out is what I call replace and release. Replace and release. Okay. You can also think about this as um, the act of displacing. So a, a saltwater fish can't live in fresh water. So if you have a saltwater fish swimming around in your backyard and you don't want it there, you just start introducing fresh water and it will just swim right out. It's much easier than trying to push something away. The more we resist, it persists. The reason why it persists it is the part of you that wants to feel heard. It's, you know, we're all just big kids. And there's still that inner eight-year-old who was trying to get your attention, who was saying, hey, I'm feeling this. And the more you ignore and push away, the less you feel heard and the louder it gets and the louder it gets and the more we try to push it away and keep it from being heard. So step one of just feeling heard and loving yourself and just self-validation. We don't need it from anywhere else. We don't need it from the outside. We don't need it from anybody else. All we need to do is say, this is part of who I am, whatever I'm feeling. And I'm going to, my, my, my two A's, I'm simply going to be aware of it. I will allow it to be without pushing it away or judging it in any way. I'm going to feel what it feels like in my body. Be curious. We're going to do this exercise in the guided meditation, but a big part of this is recognizing that we are not what, our, what we feel. We are not the emotion. The emotion is just simply something, an energy that is moving through our body. And when we just allow it to be and observe it, where do you feel it? What does it feel like? 
we can just breathe into those spaces and we can watch it just, it'll just disappear on its own. Or if it doesn't, there are techniques that we can use that I'll walk you through where we can release this and replace it with something that is kind of a higher, higher frequency, something that will really make all of this a lot easier if you're trying to um, elevate up from this up to something healthier. This really is the secret, right? So I hope this was helpful. Uh, I'd love your comments. I really would have loved to do this live because I, I feed off of the energy of, um, of you. Um, but in the situation that I'm in, which is a very bad internet access at my house, uh, this is what we'll have to do. So please leave uh, questions and comments. I can do follow-up videos uh, for Q&A. And stay tuned for the guided meditation, which is audio, that will walk you through this exercise and start practicing with what I call the love sandwich. All right, so hopefully that got you curious. I will see you at the guided meditation. Be well, everyone.